Hello Chem 19 students, this is Professor May Joan Aguila and this video lecture is a segment of the discussion highlights for chapter 4.3 redox properties. So we're already done with the first part so we're going to the second part which is all about the redox diagrams. They are referred to as redox diagrams because they show the relationship of redox equilibria in an aqueous solution with several oxidation state. In particular, we're going to take a look into three redox equilibria, the Larimer diagram, the Frost-Ebsworth diagram, or simply the Frost diagram, and the Pobe diagram. This video lecture will only focus first on the Larimer diagram. So the Latimer diagram, these are examples of the Latimer diagram for manganese-containing species. So this is referred to as the reduction potential diagram because as we can see in these diagrams, they show the standard reduction potential connecting various oxidation states of an element. So in this case, reduction potential for manganese-containing species. Usually, the Latimer diagram is presented at two extreme pH conditions, the acidic solution, which is at pH 0, and the alkaline solution, which is at pH 14. So, the Latimer diagram, usually, you'll have the species, they are connected with an arrow like this. So this arrow signifies that for permanganate, it is reduced to HMnO4 minus. And this value over here, usually it can be written above the arrow or below the arrow. But in this uh, transition, this signifies the reduction potential necessary to reduce permanganate MnO4 to HMnO4. So MnO4 minus and HMnO4 minus are adjacent species. But in this diagram, we can also see that the potential governing the reduction of permanganate to manganese dioxide, it has also listed value of one positive 1.69 volts. So the following values are in volts. In some reduction or rather Latimer diagram, this non-adjacent value is not presented, only the adjacent value. Also, what is important here that you should recognize is that the species, since this is reduction potential, it is arranged from the less reduced form or the oxidized form to, so going to the most reduced form or the less oxidized form. You can check that out by considering the oxidation number for the species of concern. In this case, manganese. In some Latimer diagram, the oxidation number is listed either below or above the element of concern. But in this diagram from Housecroft, it is not presented. But anyway, you can easily figure that out by doing algebraic sum. So for the permanganate MnO4 minus, HO is minus 2, and the overall species should be negative 1. So manganese is plus 7 here. Going to HMnO4 minus, so HO is minus 1, uh, sorry, minus 2. H is plus 1. And then overall charge of the species is negative. So this will give you plus 6 for manganese. For MnO2, 
we can see 2 oxygen 2 O so that's minus 4 so manganese here is plus 4 and then obviously manganese in the next one is plus 3 and then MN2 plus manganese is plus 2 and in the most reduced form the elemental manganese is 0 so Latimer diagram it is arranged from highest oxidation number or the most positive oxidation number to the least positive oxidation number. In the Latimer diagram as well, we can figure out if a certain species undergoes or has the propensity to undergo this proportionation. Excuse me. So this proportionation occurs or a certain species is said to undergo this proportionation if that species is oxidized and reduced at the same time. So it is its own oxidizing agent and it is its own reducing agent. So it has two fates. It is being reduced and it is oxidized at the same time. So, how do we figure that out? We can figure that out by comparing the potentials. So, essentially, potential at the right of the species of concern, if it is greater than potential at the left of the first species concern, that means that species is or has the propensity to disproportionate. <laughs> <clears throat> so, looking into that, we can see this set up. So, this is greater than positive 0.93 at the right is greater than positive 0.27. So, that means... MnO4 3 minus has the propensity to disproportionate in alkaline solution of pH 14. In acidic solution, so positive 2.10 and positive 0.9. So the potential at the right is greater than potential at the left. So HMNO4- minus has the propensity to disproportionate in acidic solution. So given that this Latimer diagram is a reduction potential diagram, we can actually derive the reduction half reactions that describe the reduction of the species. For example, so let's uh, take a look into this based on the Latimer diagram, MnO4 minus 2 H MnO4 minus, so this has a potential of 0 0.9. But what is that balance reduction half reaction that completes this? So this is not yet the complete reduction half reaction because as we can see hydrogen is not balanced and there's no uh, electron that is uh, written in the equation so based on this this is in acidic solution so manganese in MnO4- minus is plus 7 whereas manganese in HMnO4 minus is plus 6 and we know from that there should be one electron gain by MnO4 minus by Mn in MnO4 minus so for the reduction to go to HMnO4 minus now since this is an acidic solution we should balance oxygen 
with H2O first. But since in this case, oxygen is already balanced, so we don't do anything with that. And then balance H with H+. plus. In this case, there's one H in the product side, none in the reactant side. So you need to have one mole of H plus at the product side. Oh, sorry, at the reactant side. And that's it if it is in acidic solution. So what we have here as the overall or the balance reduction half reaction would be MnO4 minus plus H plus plus electron to give you H MnO4 minus. So to check. So, number of atoms involved should be balanced, and at the same time, charges should be balanced. So, one manganese on both sides, four oxygen on both sides, one hydrogen on both sides, total charges, one, uh, sorry, negative one plus one, negative one, so a net of negative one on the reactant side, and negative one on the product side. So, this is the reduction half reaction describing that transition. If we're doing it in alkaline solution, <coughs> excuse me, so we can take a look into this transformation. So, MN2O3 2 MnOH2. So E naught is negative 0 0.23 volts. So oxidation states would be manganese in Mn2O3 is plus 3. Each oxygen is minus 2. There are 3 and then there are 2 manganese. In the product side, we have plus 2. So, in the product side, instead of going with oxygen and hydrogen, you can just simply check because OH has negative charge. So, this group is already negative 2. So, to balance it out, it should be plus 2. So, technically, based on the charge difference, it's one electron but take note there are two manganese here in the reactant side and only one in the product side so technically so this should be 2 mno2 to balance the manganese and as such for every mn2o3 it needs to gain 2 electrons to convert to 2 MnOH2. So, in alkaline solution, the first step will still be balance oxygen with water. So, oxygen on the product side is 3. In the reactant, sorry, product side it's a 4. So, 2 here, but there's 2 here, so 4. In the reactant side, it's 3. So, you need to add 1 mole of H2O in the reactant side. Now, balance. Okay, let's uh, work it up first so that it's easier to figure out. So, plus H2O plus 2 electron to give you 2 Mn O2. I no, that's wrong. So it should be two 
MnOH2. So now balance hydrogen with H plus. Still H plus. Okay, so let's see. We have two hydrogens in the reactant side. Two hydrogens here, but multiply it by two, so four. So you need to add two H plus here in the reactant side. So with this, you will now have MnO2, sorry, M N2O3 plus H2O plus 2H plus plus 2 electron to give you 2 Mn. OH2 So, since this is in alkaline solution, you need to do another step. You need to add for every H plus that you can see in the equation, neutralize it with hydroxide. So, in the reactant side, we've seen there are 2 H plus. In the product side, there are 8 so only two OH minus in the reactant side. So with this, you'll generate this equation plus H2O. Now these two, H plus plus OH minus, this will actually give you water. So two H2O here plus two electrons to give you two MnOH2. And this is your balance reduction half reaction in alkaline solution. You can just simply add them together to make it more neat. So 3H2O plus uh, 2 electron to give you 2MnOH2. So this would be the reduction half reaction. The complete reduction half reaction in alkaline solution for Mn2O3 to MnOH2. Now, remember, I mentioned that in most of the cases, non-adjacent species, such as this one, are not shown in Latimer diagram. It is fortunate that in this Latimer diagram, it is actually shown. But, if it is not shown, don't panic because you can easily figure it out. Remember, in the triangle relationship of Gibbs free energy, equilibrium constant, and standard potential, we have the relationship between Standards give free energy and the potential as follows. So delta G naught is negative N, number of electrons, F, Faraday's constant, and the standard reduction potential. Now, if we wanted to take a look with this transformation, so they are not adjacent. Not adjacent meaning they are not side by side. There's this H M N O four minus in between them. So we see that it is plus one sixty seven, but we can also calculate it given these values so plus uh, point nine and plus two point ten. So obviously, we can see since. 1.69 is given. This is not simply averaging it or dividing, adding it together and divide it by 2. It's not as simple as that. What you need to do is use this relationship between Gibbs free energy and the potential. <laughs> so, what we wanted is the Gibbs free energy for the transition manganese uh, MnO4 minus to MnO2. MnO4 minus MnO2. 
I think in one of the video lecture, I mentioned how to read this type of notation. So this is uh, a reduction. So the one on the left is the, re the reactant side. The one at the right is the product side. Should be. So if we wanted to know this transition or reduction, it is actually composed of two. This first reduction to HMnO4 minus and then this second reduction to MnO2. So delta G MnO4 minus H MnO4 minus plus okay so that's the property of Gibbs free energy if you'll recall from chem 18 so the Gibbs free energy of the net the MnO4 minus to MnO2 you can actually determine that from the individual gives free energy of each step rising to the overall. So steps one and steps two. So delta G not H MnO4 minus MnO2. So I'm going to put here the oxidation state, so plus 7, I believe this is plus 6, and this is plus 4, oxidation states for manganese. <coughs> so, substitute this. So, negative NFE. Okay. So, negative NFE. So, negative N is from MnO4 to MN, MnO4 minus to MnO2 plus 7 to plus 4. So, that's a 3 uh, number of electrons gain F E naught. So, that's the one that we're trying to figure out. <coughs> so MnO4 minus MnO2. It's equivalent to negative MnO4 minus to each MnO4 minus one electron involved plus seven to plus six F and the potential is plus zero point ninety. And then we have plus from HMnO4 minus to MnO2 plus 6 to plus 4. So 2 electrons gain. F potential is plus 2.1. Okay. So we can group terms. <laughs> So we can divide them with the Faraday's constant. You see that it will cancel out. Okay. So upon canceling out, we are left with this. So, we wanted E naught MnO4 minus over MnO2. So, what you need to do is divide all of this by 3. So, you'll get negative 1 times plus 0 0.9 plus negative 2 times 2.1 sorry um, we should have divided 
first with negative. So prior to this, we just divided it by F, the Faraday's constant. We should have divided it with negative F so that this will cancel out already. Okay. Or if uh, you follow this, we can forget that and just divide it by negative 3. Okay. So divided by negative 3. So essentially, the negative sign would uh, cancel out eventually. And you'll get from here, so point, point 0.9 plus 2 times 2.1 divided by 3, it will give you 1.7 volts, which is very close to the given 1.69. So, in essence, if you go through it, this equation, you'll find that E0 non-adjacent is just simply equivalent to N E naught of step 1 plus so number of electrons for the step 1 multiplied by E naught of the step 1 plus number of electrons from the step 2 multiplied by E naught of the step 2 plus 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 <coughs> okay N, N, until whatever step you're referring to, divided by the summation of all the N. N1 plus N2 plus dot, 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 N, N. So, this is the equation for finding the non-adjacent potential. Take note, each step should be adjacent. So, that's it on how to interpret the Latimer diagram.